Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. My name's Alex, got my buddy Austin here. What's up guys? And today we're taking a look at the new Mavic 2 and not only why is the Mavic 2 so awesome, but also if it's the right drone for you. We've done a ton of different DJI videos over the years. Mm -hmm. Anything from the original Mavic, we've done the Phantoms, we've done Spire 2, we've done the Spark, we've done the... We've done them all. all done them all. You can actually uh, check the playlist below for previous videos that we've did because we'll be recommending perhaps a couple of different products from that list during this video. Yeah, and so we've been in the drones since long before DJI. We were doing it back when we were building quads out of like wooden sticks and uh, the archaic technology with individual gyros and stuff like that. So it's pretty amazing how far the technology has come just in the last five years. And the combination of all that tech technological advance has been this Mavic 2. So the Mavic Pro 2, Let's start off with it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And DJI, we're, we've gotten pretty used to them just doing a great job mm -hmm. of whatever the newest release is with all the new updates, the latest technology, the version twos of seemingly everything. Um, they've done an incredible job. But we wanted, we wanted to explore. We wanted to go through the various features of the drone. And we wanted to explore, like, who are these features for? Yeah. And if perhaps you can um, purchase something else in the DJI lineup or perhaps elsewhere that would satisfy your needs, or if this truly top of the line model is where you need to go with your money and so I think that for some people the answer will be yes and some it might be something else yeah and if you're wondering if the Mavic 2 is the best I, I think it's safe to say that yes at this price point for a consumer or prosumer drone this size it's gonna be the best that you can get for the money. Now the question is, is that do you need all of this $1,500 drone for your everyday practical use? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into each and every feature of the drone and talk about who would get some use out of those features or if you might be better off going with something a little bit cheaper, something like a Mavic Air, which is at about half the price point. So the most notable new feature of the Mavic Pro 2 um, and also seemingly the one that's talked the least about, I don't I haven't seen a ton out there, just purely about the camera. So you'll know Notice that the camera has a Hasselblad logo on it. They've um, partnered with the Swedish company about two years ago, um, and they've been making a camera that's exclusively for this platform. So they, it's based off of one inch sensor. Mm -hmm. um, it has all a, a ton of Hasselblad technology packed into it that's gonna help you create better images. Yeah, so like Austin said, it has a one inch sensor, and why that's important, it's basically how big the sensor that's exposed in the image is, and it's gonna help you with things like low light. It's gonna give you better picture quality in in general. And this is uh, not quite uh, DSLR territory, but getting very, very close. Um, so if you're the type of person that carries around your expensive mirrorless Sony a7 or something like that, instead of just taking pictures on your phone, then you might be the type of person for the Mavic 2. Now, if you're the type of person, personally like me, when I'm out with my family, I'm not lugging around a big, huge camera. I'm just gonna take pictures on my phone. Then you might be better off with something like the Mavic Air. Uh, it comes at a cheaper price point. It does have a smaller sensor, but you're still gonna get amazing photos from the air. This is not all that dissimilar from buying something like a, a Sony RX100 or something like that that has the one inch sensor in it. And those cameras can range anywhere from 500 to $1,000. And obviously with this drone coming in at 1500, you're getting a big camera value packed into a drone package. Some of the new things that you might notice about this camera is that it has um, a different co color profile than the previous cameras. So one thing you've noticed in the, like the Mavic Pro 1, it has a nice color to it, but it seems a little bit oversaturated just by mm -hmm. default to kind of get some more of that color vibrance. Where with this camera, you're going to see a lot more smooth and crisp colors um, that isn't kind of being fixed uh, in post-processing. Uh, you truly unlock the potential of this Hasselblad camera when you start using the manual capabilities. And the Mavic controller is pretty standard. It's not too much different from the original one. Um, it has the rockers on the side, just like your SLR has little little rollers on the front and the back that you can adjust with your thumb and your index finger. And you can program that to, to adjust different types of things, such as your shutter speed, aperture, um, ISO setting, stuff like that on the fly. Now, if you're the type of person who enjoys manual mode, you're gonna enjoy this Mavic. It's basically like a flying SLR. It feels like that. It has full manual capabilities. Uh, you can change the f-stop, which is something that you could not do on the original Mavic, and you can also adjust the shutter speed and the uh, ISO. Other adjustments include stuff like white balance, all your standard stuff that you find on most cameras. Now, if you're the type of person who, like I said, sh is shooting pictures on your phone, or maybe even if you do have a camera, but you just leave it on auto because it's good enough. And on 
auto on a nice camera, even on a phone on auto, you're gonna get good pictures. And it's no different with this Mavic, but if you are that type of person, uh, there's a good chance that you aren't gonna be able to distinguish the difference in the quality of the image compared with the Mavic 2 compared to the Mavic Air. And that's not to say that there isn't a difference because there is, the Mavic 2 is better, but it's gonna be more, I'd say, I'd say it's more geared towards prosumer to commercial professional drone pilots, people who are actually uh, using this as a tool to perfect their craft. Real quick, just wanted to thank Epson for sponsoring this video. Uh, specifically, they recently came out with a new BT300 Smart Vision FPV glasses. It's actually pretty cool because it projects the image into the lenses of the glasses, and so you can look at the drone and the screen at the same time, and it's excellent for maintaining visual line of sight. These are kind of pricey at $699, but there's really nothing like it out there on the market right now that you can actually see all of your flight information and look at your drone at the exact same time. DJI and Epson have actually collaborated on two different apps. Mm -hmm. so the first app is kind of like an AR simulator where you can kind of see a visual representation of a Mavic and fly it. And the second app is called the SOAR app, which kind of gives you a visual indicator of where your drone is, AR flight lines, and also um, utilizes the built-in camera. So the glasses actually plug into this module that fits perfectly into the Mavic controller, and it's got a little trackpad, just like a laptop on it, and it uses an Android operating system, and you can use the trackpad to navigate through the app pretty easily. So to be perfectly honest, when we got these, we were a little bit skeptical, but after they've been passed around the office a little bit, we both had a chance to use them, they actually do what they claim to do extremely well. Mm -hmm. They give you a heads-up display of all your flight information of the what the drone is seeing, but you can also maintain that visual line of sight. You can look down at their controller, you can look at your assistant operator, whatever you need to do. They do a great job. So if you are a commercial operator and you think that this would be something you'd be interested in, you can check the link below. Just by checking these glasses out and just clicking the link below, you're actually helping us out too, so thank you for that. So there's two halves to the camera experience with DJI drones, and that's just the, the end result. So what you're seeing probably right now um, over this footage is just you know beautiful cinematic quality video. The other half of the experience is in the app. So the DJI app is where you make all these um, adjustments on the fly mm -hmm. while the, um, the drone itself is flying. And so I think that's an experience that is, is difficult to share, for difficult for people to understand, but it's really important that DJI nails that experience. And they to, um, to date they have, yeah. has done a really good job of making all of those uh, camera options and features um, accessible in an intuitive way. Because unlike a camera, you're not just on the back of the camera with a touch screen or something like that, adjusting the settings. You're doing this while it's flying in the air. So the image quality on the camera overall, it's safe to say it's very good. It's, it's really good actually. And and part of the way that they're doing that is like Austin said earlier, is they're using a new color profile. And basically what that means is it gives the images a higher dynamic range, meaning that the bright stuff is brighter, the dark stuff is darker. It just gives it a more vibrant, contrasty image. And it looks really, really good right out of the camera, but it also gives you a little bit more flexibility in post. If you are a video editor and you wanna go in and bring out those tones a little bit more, you're gonna have a little bit more flexibility in post with that. Now that being said, the camera is capable of shooting full 4K uh, at 10 bit, which is pretty amazing. It has two different 4K modes. One, it's called full FOV, which it gives you a little bit wider field of view, or there's a cropped field of view where it brings you in a little bit tighter, both of which work really well, both of which are only capable of shooting at 30 frames per second max. You can also do a 24 frames per second. It can be brought down to 1080p. Um, you can actually do 1080p at 120 frames per second. Uh, but I will say that the quality is not bad, but it is. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like when you shoot slow-mo on your cell phone depending on what cell phone you have the slow motion footage while it is amazing because it's slow it is at a lesser quality um, and even though the 1080p on the Mavic at 120 frames per second is 1080p uh, it just doesn't look as good as the 1080p from the same camera when you're shooting it at 30 and I'm sure there's various reasons for that but it is something to keep in mind so one of our favorite things about the Mavic Pro 1 was the OcuSync technology that comes in um, this is a uh, control -like Link, video link combo. Um, it's also compatible with the DJI goggles. That just makes an incredible low latency, high definition, immersive experience when you're flying with one of these drones. So they've done a lot of tweaking and updating to that, just like they have done on most of our, uh, most of all the other parts on the drone, and now it's OcuSync 2. One of the things that we learned with OcuSync uh, kind of recently, the OcuSync technology uses a combination of 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz to communicate with the drone, and it also brings the video feed back to the transmitter to display on your cell phone. The interesting thing about that is, us uh, as hobbyists, our controllers that we fly our plane off of, those are actually running at 2.4 gigahertz as well. Our FPV goggles, which we fly our race drones off of, those are running off of 5.8. And so when you have a Mavic, which is an ultra powerful 
transmission system because it can go up to five miles and you're you're flying it around other hobbyists and hobby activity you got to be very careful about knocking other people's radio links out of the sky in other words we were flying a plane uh, fpv we had a mini quad and we had an airplane we made sure nobody was on the same channel we didn't take into consideration that the mavic 2 was also going to be in the air and what happened was it ended up knocking uh, a certain plane, specifically our DIY Giant A10, our second iteration, uh, knocked it out of the sky. And so that's why we're currently rebuilding the A10. So it is just something to keep in mind. Now there are settings you can go in, you can go in and specifically turn off 5.8. So it's no longer gonna interfere with people's FPV signals, but it is still potential that it could interfere with 2.4 gigahertz, which is what most people are flying off of. So it's kind of a balance. You just gotta be careful. I will say more often than not, as long as you don't have too many people in the air, it's normally not an issue, but it it is something to keep in mind. So talking about range, that kind of brings up a, a talking point of performance, mm -hmm. is that there's incremental improvements to performance um, across the, the every aspect of the drone. Uh, first one being flight time. Uh, the DJI website says it's gonna get about 31 minutes of flight time. I believe that's just kind of like your standard hovering around type thing. I think if you're really flying at cranking on, you're probably looking at 25 to 28 minutes, something like that. Yeah, I'd even say like, if you fly like me, 20 to 25 minutes, um, which is still really impressive. And now technically they're they're advertising the Mavic 2 at having a couple more minute flight time than the original Mavic. So not a huge difference. But one thing that I will say, especially for people who aren't used to flying drones or just flying an RC thing in the air, uh, 20 minute plus, anything around that range, that's a very, very long flight time. Long long enough to get any kind of shot, like say you, maybe you were using this for a commercial job. But for example, our, our buddy Trent Palmer and a lot of his, uh, a lot of this footage that you're seeing of the paraglider and some of the epic bush planes are from our good buddy Trent Palmer and he actually is a professional drone pilot for a living. He's doing movies, commercials, big time stuff. He's been in the business for almost 10 years now and his big movie camera drones that carry like a red epic, they only fly for about eight minutes. And so typically you can be up in the air for about five minutes and get the job done, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so flight time in general is gonna be fantastic on pretty much all the DJI products, but specifically the Mavic. I think it's the longest flight time on any consumer drone to date. Again, talking about performance, you're gonna see um, a cons considerable amount of speed out of this thing. The, the previous Mavic uh, was on a three cell battery. Now this is one is on a little bit bigger four cell battery with a little bit bigger motor. So it has a little bit more weight to carry around, but they compensated with that for battery size um, and motor size. And so I think on sport mode, you're gonna see uh, about what, 70 kilometers per hour? 45 miles an hour, which uh, when you're driving in a car might not sound like the fastest, but in terms of driving an RC vehicle of any type, <laughs> um, it is very, very fast. Um, especially for somebody who is new. So that is one thing to consider. All of the DJI drones are pretty fast and also fast enough to get most shots, excluding specific scenarios. For example, our, our friend Trent Palmer, um, he does have a YouTube channel. We'll put a link down below. Uh, he specifically likes this, not only for the one inch camera, but also the speed. He was running the Mavic Air just because it's so portable, but because of what he does on his YouTube channel, which is flying bush planes and filming them during takeoffs and landing and stuff like that, that extra 10 or so mile an hour really makes a difference for him and he's also an experienced pilot to be able to handle a drone at that speed and get the shots that he wants so it's not necessarily something that everybody has to have 45 mile an hour drone um, but in specific examples uh, I can see why it would be useful so another big emphasis that DJI has put on their products is computer vision and so the that's a huge part of the DJI app it's a big part of all of the little sensors and cameras you see all over the all over the quadcopter and we've had a hilarious time testing this over the years just because it has gotten better and better we've tried to fly these things into buildings with the you know uh, with the sense and avoid turned on and we've tried to um, get it to fly into trees sometimes successfully <laughs> um, but it just keeps getting better I guess yeah. that's the point and the computer vision the amount of sensors that are on the Mavic Pro 2 is substantially more than the previous one a lot of the smart modes and a lot of with the uh, um, just ways that it navigates through the world and tries to prevent you as a pilot from crashing is pretty impressive yeah and all that being said, it has come a very, very long way. But me personally, um, especially with this, I had pretty high hopes, almost I think too high of hopes. I would use the sense and avoid and the obstacle avoidance and all these safety precautions that they're adding to these drones as extra security. I wouldn't give it 100% faith that this is gonna prevent your drone from crashing no matter what, because that's not necessarily the case. And one thing that also kind of took me off 
off guard is they were really boasting the 360 degree sense and avoid on this thing. And while it does work, it only actually works in two modes. It works in active track, and that's where you select the subject and it automatically tracks and follows it. And it also works in tripod mode. So that being said, when you're flying in normal kind of uh, what they call P mode or automatic mode, if you're sliding to the right, getting a shot, which you're often doing, you don't have that extra security of knowing that if there's a tree over there, it's gonna automatically stop you because it won't. We thought that the 360 degree sense and avoid was something that just was turned on out of the box. And after reading into the manual a little bit, we found out that it's actually not. You have to be using one of those two modes, either active track or tripod. But that being said, it does give you a little bit extra security knowing that, you know, you're not gonna run into something if you go forward, you know, straight into it. Also DJI drones in general, for people who are new to drones, it has all of your standard DJI features. It has GPS hold, it has altitude lock. If you let go of your sticks, it's gonna stop, it's gonna hold its position, it's gonna hold its altitude until the battery dies. And if the battery dies, it's going to come back home and land exactly where it took off. That's standard across all DJI drones. It's been features that they've had on all of the drones since uh, the early Phantoms. Uh, speaking of smart features, there is a lot of smart uh, features in the DJI lineup. And some of them are kind of gimmicky, some of them are more like selfie oriented, and some of them are incredibly useful. Um, the one that got the biggest refresh this time around was Active Track. They're calling it Active Track 2. Yep. So what's new with Active Track 2? Uh, first off, it's tracking, obviously. You select a person or a thing and you hit go and the drone will automatically not only follow it physically, the drone will follow it, but the camera also follows it. So if the camera needs to pan up or down or left or right, it'll do that automatically to keep the subject in frame. Now, the big difference between Active Track 1 and 2 is one, uh, only use 2D imagery. So basically use the camera's image to track the subject matter based off of contrast and it used an algorithm and whatnot. There is a new technology where it's using a combination of 2D imagery and 3D imagery. So it's actually using the obstacle avoidance sensors uh, to map the space in front of it 3D and it uses that alongside with the 2D imagery to track it and it just works a little bit better. I noticed that it also has a little bit more aggressive mode. There's a little safety button that you can turn off and it allows the drone to uh, fly a little bit faster and track. Um, we took one of our cars from our drive on channel, which you, if you guys haven't checked out, you can check that link out right there. But we took one of our RC cars to see, to really put it to the test and see how fast it would, would go. And I have to say it was pretty impressive. Now we were still able to lose it and I I was even able to lose it when I was just running. But that being said, if you're out in a wide open space and you're short on hands and you don't have a drone operator, it is something that could come in handy uh, from a consumer basis or even a, a commercial use case as well. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind with some of these flight modes is that they're not gonna do everything perfectly. It's almost like uh, setting your, your camera all the way to auto settings. So it's focusing and it's doing everything on its own as opposed to you choosing the settings you wanna use. It's gonna look fine most of the time. Um, something like the, uh, the point of interest mode. Point of interest is basically it's an orbit mode around a point of interest and you can do it at different speeds and different altitudes. That's something that you can do on your own as a pilot and it's not that difficult to do. But if you're wanting to play with camera settings or if you're wanting to take a video of yourself and not make it look like you're not holding a transmitter or yeah. whatever. Um, so having some of these features that have the, dr the drone fly itself are helpful. But I think that most people will find they're probably better off in melee mode for some of it. Yeah, especially if you're the type of person that is truly considering a Mavic 2 $1,500 drone, chances are your skill level is at a point where you do not need to rely on automatic features. Uh, ourselves, as well as our friends like Trent Palmer and some of our other commercial drone pilots, um, you will never find them using automatic features. They are always flying manual to get the specific shot, and that just comes with stick time. You get more times on the stick, you're gonna be more fluid with the controls of the drone, the controls of the camera. You're gonna be able to fly with purpose and get the shots that you really want to accomplish. So other than active track, there's a couple other what they call quick shots and these are more kind of like what you said selfie oriented there's one called asteroid which is totally a gimmick but it's really really cool and i'm actually a pretty big fan of it where it basically does a drony where it pulls out and then once it gets to the top altitude it actually takes a 360 degree panorama and then it kind of like morphs the panorama picture into the video and it kind of makes it look like it pulls out to a tiny little planet <laughs> and it's just totally gimmicky but totally awesome and i'm okay with dji you got my thumbs up i love it um other than that they have your tip 
typical uh, droney or selfie shot where it just kind of pulls out. They have a rocket which goes up and down. Boomerang is another one where it kind of like goes in outward away from you 360 degrees around you and then comes back to where it started. All of them are pretty cool. They are geared towards like uh, a selfie kind of shot or video where you're filming yourself and you don't want to be looking like you're just holding the controller looking down. What this allows you to do is hit go. You can act natural. You can walk. You can do whatever and it gets the shot. Um, that being said, a lot of the DJI drones such as the Mavic Air, they also have these features. So it is something that you can do on something like a Mavic Air, which is actually half the price. So one of the other cool features of this is it almost has like a separate camera control from the gimbal standpoint. You can actually use the camera to look around. The way that it works is you can be flying the drone. You can just kind of like pin the stick or even just put it into a hover. And then what you can do is on the app, you can tap the screen and drag and it will actually allow the camera to look left and right and up and down, which is unique because previous Mavics, Phantoms, all the other uh, consumer based drones like this, they would only allow you to control the gimbal from a pitch axis. They wouldn't let you actually look left and right. And so that is something new that's on the Mavic 2. I don't know how useful it is. I don't know why you would fly the drone forward and look left with the camera when you could just fly the camera sideways and look left with the whole entire drone. Uh, why fly forward and look left when you can just, you know, fly the drone sideways and look left and fly the direction you want to go. One of the other features that this has the capability of recording in a new codec, it actually does H.265, um, which is basically going to give you a little bit more capability in post-production. Traditionally, all of the older Mavics and most cameras record at an H.264 codec, which works just just fine and most people won't even notice the difference but if you are a filmmaker if you are an editor and you want to have that extra capability this does have the h265 codec which is pretty nice so the Maverick Pro 2 I would say is the most refined experience that we have come across from DJI yet um, we uh, went ahead and purchased this instead of the zoom um, just because we felt it was more applicable and you could kind of get some of the you know, crop in features and posts and that sort of thing. And I think the biggest, the bigger sensor is really the big selling point here on this. The fact that you just have this such a robust camera and a really well integrated flying system. At the top of the video, we talked about which flying platforms for you, like whether it's DJI or it's somebody else. Something that we're really excited about with just overall DJI platforms is just the ease of use. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's cohesive through their whole ecosystem with just the DJI app and just the way you operate it. You know, we've operated anywhere from, you know, Inspire 2 to the Little Spark, you know, all the yeah. way to the other end of the spectrum. However, I think that this um, model falls, you know, firmly to the top of the group and yeah. a lot of the features that it offers. And I would even argue to say, even though $1,500 is a lot of money and like Alex has alluded to, you can kind of get most of the features for about half that. You know, you're buying a camera. You're buying a really nice, really well-made camera um, in, in an extremely stable and extremely easy to use flying platform. So while overall, I would say that there is similar features that you can get in other drones. Um, they did an excellent job and somebody that's looking to invest a thousand or two thousand dollars into you know another piece of equipment into their camera bag I would highly recommend this one yeah and to put it into perspective the Inspire one which was DJI's first kind of like larger uh, prosumer to commercial sized drone it was the big white one it got all kinds of uh, press you guys are probably familiar with it this new Mavic has a bigger sensor than the original Inspire 1 the Inspire 1 came in at a price point of about $3,200 so the fact that you are getting a drone four years later that is way bigger than half the size I'd say like a quarter of the size of an Inspire 1 and half the price with a better camera is pretty pretty amazing and so for the people who are out there who are photographers filmmakers video tech enthusiasts, um, I would definitely steer them towards the Mavic 2. If this is your first drone, however, and maybe you aren't necessarily a photographer, but you, you wanna get a drone and maybe use it like a, a family video camera and you take it on vacations and get some shots while you're on the road and just have some fun flying it, um, you might wanna look into some of the other older models, uh, something like the Mavic Air, which isn't technically an older model, it's, it's still brand new, uh, but it's just coming in at about half the price point. It has a smaller sensor, uh, it still takes amazing Amazing footage. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out our video on the Mavic Air, you can check that below. As well as all the way back to, I would go as far back to like the Phantom 3 Professional. Um, that drone is going on three, four years old as well, but it has a 4K camera. And you can find those things on eBay uh, and other parts of the internet for three, four hundred dollars, which is pretty incredible for a flying 4K camera. Um, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what you shoot it on, when you get shots from above at golden hour, even if it is just cell phone camera quality or cell phone 
drone size sensor, it's still gonna look really, really amazing. And if this is your first drone, that might be a better route for you. Special shout out to our buddy Trent Palmer, thank you. He let us use a lot of his epic footage. He lives out there on the West Coast, so he's getting all these amazing sunsets. He also happens to be a professional drone pilot, so that helps too. Thank you, Trent, for the awesome footage. You can check his channel below if you're interested in bush flying, drone cinematography, that kind of thing. So we're looking forward to flying and testing this more. Um, and it's definitely gonna become a staple um, around here for what we use. Um, we do carry some of the models we've been talking about, such as the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro uh, 1 in our store. Mavic Pro 2 is coming soon, so you can check the link below for that. We just wanna thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.